What's up guys, this is Ricky from Motionless and I am here in my house in quarantine just like everybody else uh, to answer some of your most burning, important questions. I wanna start, first of all, on a serious note and say that um, there were a lot of questions about future shows, the festivals, things getting canceled, when people can expect an announcement about um, things starting back up or when things will get moved to and what's coming what's coming up with the upcoming tours. And the truth is, is we don't know. We have no idea. Uh, all that we can do is wait and we're listening to our local and government officials and trying to determine what's gonna be best for the safety of us, for the safety of you guys. And we're just not sure. We're, we're taking it week by week and there were a lot of questions about the festivals and we are not sure what's happening with those. We're trying to get onto the festivals that were canceled whenever they get rescheduled, but there's no confirmation of when that would be or if that would happen or anything. Again, it's just a waiting game and that's that's unfortunately all that we can do. How are you keeping busy during this time? There was a couple questions that were like this that also were asking, what should I be doing during this quarantine? Do you have a recommendation? And while I can't recommend something for everybody to do, um, I know that what I've been doing is um, just trying to stay productive. And I'm a huge advocate for learning something and bettering yourself. I personally have been working on stuff that I know two or three months from now is going to help me as a person in things that I enjoy and things that I want to pursue. And um, there's a couple master classes that I started taking and watching. I, I think that this, th the point of me saying all that is that I think that this right now is the perfect opportunity for Anybody that wants to learn something new or has wanted to try picking up a new skill or a new hobby, this is something that you can use to your advantage. Uh, being at home with nothing else to do, you're kind of forced into doing whatever it is that you are doing. You know, there's no distraction really. It's just kind of like, I have nothing else to do, so I might as well just do this thing. So this is a perfect opportunity if you're looking to play guitar or play bass, um, if you're trying to learn a new language. And the other nice thing is that there are endless resources on the internet. And I know that a lot of companies and uh, websites are, are offering things for free or at discounted prices so that people can take advantage of the situation. So I would say do that. Um, to circle back around, I've been working on um, my short film, I've been writing a little bit of music on my own just to see what comes out. And, uh, I've just hop around to a bunch of stuff. I've been doodling here and there on my iPad and it, yeah, there's never a, never a dull moment, I guess. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump to the next question. Is there anyone you'd like to collaborate with on a future song? This question has come up a lot in our VIP and I'm interested to know what you guys would be interested in hearing. So many people ask and it makes me feel like you guys all have this collective idea of somebody or some artist that you, you know that you want, but you want to make sure that we're into the idea so you won't say it, but um, you want to know if what we're going to say lines up with what you're thinking. I don't know if that's the case, but that's just the feeling that I get. I think it would be cool to collaborate with anybody outside of the metal genre. I think it's always interesting to hear when bands take what they're doing and mix it with somebody or something that is completely different than uh, what they're used to doing. And I feel like that brings this cool 
weird mesh of things and can kind of combine two worlds and maybe share two fans that are two sets of fans that normally wouldn't listen to, you know, the other one, but they are now because their favorite, this person and this person are combining. And I always think that that's a cool thing to look for. And so with that being said, I guess I think it would be cool to do somebody in the pop world, like Ariana Grande would be cool. Um, even though I, I don't know how that would happen or how we could even make that happen, but um, someone of that caliber of an artist, um, I I think Ellie Goulding is cool. Um, and for some reason, I'm only thinking of female artists at the moment. Um, so I guess I'll go with those two for now. Do you plan on writing another book? And will it be similar to Gloom? What would it be about? Right after I put out Gloom, I was 100% headfirst in thinking of ideas for a novel. And I had three main ideas that I was kind of pursuing as avenues of, you know, where I could go. And they were all pretty different. And I ended up getting sidetracked with other things as that happens. And um, a lot of those things have been kind of pushed to the side. And a lot of my writing has kind of turned from manuscript format to script format. And I'm, and I'm trying to write more in that direction to kind of help push all of my film stuff at the forefront of everything. So um, I would like to write a book, um, but at this point I'm too uh, headfirst into doing film. So I'm, I'm taking a step back from that and putting a step forward in this direction and um, trying to use my my writing to the advantage of that. So if any sort of writing comes out from me, it will be in script form, I think, for the next at least foreseeable future. Um, but I appreciate that you guys enjoyed the book. Long answer, boiled down, I'm going to say I would love to write another book, but I'm focusing on other things at the moment and maybe in the future. Outside inspirations that helped write Gloom. Uh, yeah, I, I think when you're writing, you take inspiration from everything for just to use an example, the last, the last story in the book called trial and error. Um, I, that idea was sparked by just going to the grocery store. So I think, I think you can take inspiration from anywhere. You just have to be willing to um, grab it when it comes and internalize it and figure out how to spit it back out in something that is interesting and coherent and um, something that can kind of toy with people's emotions a little bit. Do you ever consider writing an autobiography? No. My reason for that is I, while I have had uh, a, an interesting life, um, I don't know that it's been dramatic enough for me to warrant writing a book. It's hard because I I feel like there's an element of, uh, I guess, almost like a, a narcissism element when you're writing an autobiography. I mean, you have to really love yourself and your life and really feel like you've accomplished something to want to do that, I think. And I'm not at that point, and I'm not sure if I will ever be at that point. Um, so short answer is no favorite place to tour. My favorite place to tour is probably, God, I know that I'm going to say one and then every other country is going to be like, what? That's bullshit. Um, but, and it's, it's hard because there's a lot of great countries and I love traveling and seeing new places and exploring uh, but I am going to have to go with Australia um, just because it's so nice there and the people are always so friendly and the shows are always great. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know more than that. I think it's more of a vibe thing. It's just I vibe with Australia and 
uh, I can't wait to go back. And I know that everybody else in the band can't wait to go back either. So we're excited. Most difficult and least difficult challenges you've faced during quarantine. I guess the most difficult would be just staying inside. Not that I am a huge busybody when I'm home anyway, but just even going to the grocery store is, I'm just like, Ugh, I don't want to. Um, my, my girlfriend is actually immune compromised, so I'm terrified that I'm going to go out and bring something home to her where she can get really sick. So I haven't left the house aside from just taking walks in almost a month. And I'm just, I, I just want to go to the store like a normal person. And, uh, I want to just go to Target and walk around. <laughs> the least difficult challenge has been just not not worrying about what I'm doing at all. I just wake up and I'm like, well, this is my day. I guess today is going to be just like yesterday and tomorrow is going to be just like today. And uh, it's going to be like that forever. So um, I'm starting to get in the groove of it. It's just... Uh, trying to stay productive and busy so that it, I don't think about it too much. So hopefully all of you guys are having as easy of a time as I am so far. You seem very deep into fine arts with interests in film, editing, photography, writing, music, and drawing. Is there anything else new that you'd like to try? Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I... I kind of feel like I found my handful of things that I really enjoy doing. And I think that by spreading myself too thin, I'm going to stop enjoying certain things because I'm not as involved. And there was a couple people that asked about uh, my candles and why I stopped doing that. And that's part of the reason I was writing for the book. I had my podcast going, I was doing candles and I just felt like I had a hand in, in so many different pots and I was tired of of feeling like I was just getting like surface level stuff and I wanted to really just focus on one or two things that I really enjoyed doing. So that's why I stopped the candles. That's why I stopped the podcast. And I know that a lot of people asked about the podcast. And to be honest with you, being stuck at home has made me be like, huh, I wonder if I should start that again. Um, but a big part of the reason why I stopped on the other hand of just having too much stuff that I other otherwise wanted to do was, it was just hard to link up with people. It was hard to get people to be interested. I had people say yes and then never get back to me. And I was just tired of chasing people around. I don't, I don't need to do that with my time. I, I'd rather do something else. So unless it's just me talking for an hour, which I don't know why anyone would want to listen to me ramble <laughs> on for an hour about something, um, and I don't think I would bring it back, but if there's an overwhelming um, response of people that want me to do the podcast again and just ramble for an hour, <laughs> that I will. Um, I might not like it, but I will if that's what everyone wants. So. Let me know. <laughs> have I ever gotten a band tattoo? I have two band tattoos. I have a heartogram behind, I think it's this ear, and then I have a shitty AFI leaf behind this ear that was done by a guy in Austin. Wait, no. Was it Austin? I don't know. I got a tattoo somewhere on tour years and years and years ago. And he blew it out, and now it just looks, a, looks like a turd on the back behind my ear. So I've been trying to figure out what to do with it to make it look better, but I have long hair, and I don't know that that matters. So uh, I've been kind of slacking there, but those are my only two band tattoos. Favorite song to play on tour? Uh, I'm going to have to say as of the last tour... Um, the last couple tours, actually, I'm going to say Catharsis. Just because, I don't know, there's something about that song. And 
I don't know what it is. I just love the song. I love the vibe. I love the feeling I get when I play it. I love the sing-along from the crowd when we play it. And I think it's great. And I, there was a couple other questions that were about um, favorite songs off Disguise. And I'm going to say Catharsis for that. I don't know why I can't talk today. I'm going to say Catharsis for that. And my favorite song ever that we've ever put out... I'm going to say is either another life or catharsis. What advice would you give to your younger self? I guess I would tell my younger self to quit worrying about things and quit trying to force things to be. When I was younger and trying to write music and start a band that I was trying to force things into place and I was so upset because I couldn't find people. I couldn't, I couldn't, get things to work. I couldn't write the music that I wanted to write and everything just felt so frustrating because it was all out of my control. And and I guess my lesson that I learned there was to just put it out there that that's what you want and do the best that you can to get there and eventually the universe will see that and and hopefully give it to you. <laughs> so that's what I would tell myself. Have I ever considered doing my own music? I have uh, quite a few times, actually, and then every time I think that that's a good idea and I start working on stuff, I'm like, nah, fuck this. <laughs> the problem with writing my own music is I feel like a lot of the stuff that I write is very similar to Motionless, so it would be kind of counterproductive to write my own stuff in that same style um, when that music could just be used in motionless so do I miss touring or am I happy I get to stay home uh, yeah I miss touring favorite quarantine activity when Animal Crossing first came out my girlfriend bought it and I was kind of playing with her a little bit playing her character <laughs> um, so I was doing that for a little while um, I don't know it's weird because I, I was working super hard on on, like I said before, my short film and all the various aspects that go into play with that. And and then the lockdown happened and then it was like, it just kind of felt like everything got put on hold. Now it almost feels, not that it's silly for me to work on it, but it almost feels kind of like, well, now I can do something else at the moment because life is on hold and this will still be here when it's not on hold anymore. And so I think uh, for a week or so, I really tried to just do nothing because I have a really hard time doing nothing. And I even have a hard time sitting and watching shows on Netflix and movies and stuff anymore, just because I feel like there's so many things that I want to accomplish. And I feel like I'm not, if I'm not working towards those things, then I'm just being lazy and unproductive and so it's really, really hard for me to, to just sit and do nothing. And every once in a while, I think you need that time to just regenerate and kind of recoup your batteries and, and recharge. And so for about a week or so, I really just forced myself to do nothing. So I, it was hard, <laughs> but I sat on the couch all day, every day for a week straight and it was great. And now I'm trying to get back into the swing of doing stuff, whether that be, um, you know, back into editing or um, working on music or, you know, just stuff to keep me busy while, while this is all happening. So how old were you when you started playing music? I was, I think, 12. I started playing guitar and I took lessons for about six months and then I stopped I was frustrated because I wanted to learn faster than what I was being taught and I thought um, wrongly that I could learn faster on my own and I think that if I would have <clears throat> if I would have stayed with it I would have learned things a lot faster and progressed faster but um, it is what it is and I'm here today and um, 
it's crazy to be able to say that I've been playing guitar for almost 20 years. That's pretty wild. Where did your passion for filmmaking originate from? Uh, oh boy, this is a long story. Um, <clears throat> so my high school had a uh, video production class and this was back when there was still, um, I don't even know if anybody watching this even knows what this is, but um, you would film, we'd film stuff with Canon XL1s that shot on mini DV tapes, which were like, um, they were like this big, like as big as this GoPro. And they were like little cassette tapes that you record onto. You would import it to your computer by recording it on the computer from the tape. And then you would go in and chop it up and edit it and everything. And, and the whole class was just about fundamentals of, of video and what makes video, you know, interesting to look at and rule of thirds and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's where it really started for me was I think maybe sophomore year was my first year. And it was just fun to take a camera out with friends and, and go run around the school and try and create a story with nothing. And that was my real first kind of jump into that. And, um, originally before music took off, my goal was to move down to California and live somewhere in LA after high school and do something in the film industry, whether that be, um, operating a camera or writing or, um, you know, doing anything that I could to just be involved in that world. So it's, it's like, I almost was going to live one life and then the band just kind of happened. And, um, and I still have this love for all of this other world of, of things. And so now trying to bridge the gap between the two and also jump further into that realm and see where that goes and, and what happens there has been really interesting and and uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. What was your first band you joined? Uh, the first band I joined was technically, I guess in high school. I actually wanted to be in a, in a band that my friends were forming because I didn't want to be left out. So I begged my parents to get me a guitar and a little tiny practice amp and I started taking lessons and guitar just kind of became my outlet for everything, whether I was, I was angry or sad or happy or anything. Guitar was kind of my go-to. After that, I was in a band with some high school friends and played at the high school battle of the bands and I was the front man and I sang terribly and that was the moment when I was like, I think I could, I could be in a band probably. My favorite band to listen to right now. Man, that's a hard question. Um, I have been listening to podcasts more than anything recently. Um, right after we got off the Beartooth tour, there was about five Beartooth songs that I had looped on repeat forever. For probably a month straight. And that was the only thing I could listen to. I'd wake up. And I would be like, this song's in my head, I have to listen to it now. And I would just listen to those same five songs on repeat. And um, thankfully I'm out of that stage because I, I needed some something else to break up the insanity. But, um, but I guess that was the most recent thing that I was re really hooked on. So, yeah. Where and when will it be possible to watch Soot? I'm not sure yet. I am kind of waiting to figure out what to do with it at the moment. Um, my initial goal was to kind of submit to some film festivals and see what happens there. But with film festivals being shut down, uh, I guess that's not really possible. So now I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, I'm sure that at some point I will release it online. I just don't know when. And yeah, so whenever that happens, I will let everyone know. 
and uh, it will be out there. Favorite thing about going on tour? My favorite thing about going on tour uh, is probably playing shows and meeting new people and um, and bothering everybody because I really, really enjoy pressing people's buttons. I have nobody to do that with right now, so um, so it's a bummer. When will there be new music? There was a lot of that question, and um, it's funny because some of the some of the way that people worded the question, it almost makes me feel like people think that we can just whip out an album in two weeks and call it a day, and that's not the way that it works. And that's definitely not the way that it works for us. This last album we were working on for six months to a year before we even went to the studio. So that's just not how it works. And we're still at the tail end of our, of our, um, of our record cycle for disguise. But with that being said, we have something special coming early May. Caleb from Beartooth may or may not have something to do with it. So keep your eyes out for that. Would a tour in Japan be possible? Um, would it be possible? Yes. Would it be possible right now? No. Would it be possible sometime in the future? Yes. Do we want to? Yes. Will we? Probably. I don't know when. Favorite song to play and why? And I like the sing-along songs, so... Oh boy, um, I'm gonna just say catharsis. How are you enjoying your quarantine? I'm enjoying it just as much as everyone else is. How does it feel knowing that so many people look up to you and the band? The most humbling thing is having somebody say that to you and seeing yourself in that person. I mean, it, there's been so many times where someone has come up to me and said something to me and I'm like, man, I, I was that person, you know, 15 years ago, that person was me. And so it's cool to see myself and other people and to see other people have the excitement and, and, uh, and drive and, and, uh, passion for music that I had when I was younger. And that's always really neat to see. What food do you hate? I have to tie my shoe. I said in an interview that my least favorite food of all time was pizza and I got a lot of shit for it. And I still stand by that to a degree, My, but I need to word it correctly so that people don't think that I just outright hate pizza. My least favorite food is not pizza. I hate pizza outside of Northeast Pennsylvania pizza. And when I say this, people are like, well, have you had New York pizza? Have you had Chicago pizza? I still like Northeast Pennsylvania pizza more. I'm not even from here originally, and I like it more. So you know that I'm not biased. And so I just want to make that clear. I like pizza from Northeast Pennsylvania, and that's it. And if you come here and eat anywhere, eat pizza anywhere here, you'll understand why. Top five horror movies. Oof. Top five of anything is really hard. I'm going to say recently, uh, Get Out, um, Midsommar, and what was another one? I want to see Parasite, and I want to say that that's going to be my favorite because I, from everyone I've talked to that has seen it, they've really enjoyed it. So I want to say that, but I haven't seen it yet. Those are going to be my top three. I can't think of a top five. Any new music you guys are working on during quarantine? Yes, as I mentioned before, I've been working on music in general. Um, mine, the stuff that I've been working on has kind of been all over the place. It hasn't really particularly been for Motionless. It's just been writing songs just to write songs and just to do something and try new things. And um, I I have a bit, of, a bit of everything in there. Maybe some of that will kind of get picked and, and uh, molded to motionless stuff. Maybe it won't. I don't know. I'm just writing just to write. Throughout all the years in the band, what keeps you motivated to do what you do? I think that being 
uh, an artist personality type. Um, I am a creative at heart, and I think that everybody in bands and music and um, any sort of art will always create. And I don't think that you need to stay motivated to create. I think it's just something that you get these ideas and you get these thoughts and and um, and it's just trying to determine what, at least for me, what medium do I take this out into? I have these ideas, what is best? How do I push them out into the world? And whether that be through writing or drawing or painting or um, writing music or doing film or photography or anything like that. It's all creative and I can't see a, a time in my life where I'll ever not be doing something creative. And I don't think that I need to be motivated to do that. I think that it just happens. And I think that that's just who I am. How can you find other people that are interested in being in a band? I had the same problem when I was trying to start a band and it was always a huge obstacle trying to find people that I felt were dedicated enough or that wanted it as bad as I did. And I think that that's half the battle when it comes to being in a successful band is just finding the people that are going to take it as seriously as you do and will. And right now, fortunately for all of you guys, you have the internet at your disposal and you can, I mean, you have people at your fingertips and you can write things and email stuff and, and, uh, compile songs together that way. I mean, that's, that's how all of motionless stuff is written is email back and forth, find, I don't know, Facebook groups, um, find people in Reddit, uh, subreddits that you enjoy of music. Um, I mean, the, the options are kind of endless as far as what's out there for you to use. Um, but use everything at your disposal. Do you have any advice for fans that want to pursue a career in music or start their own band? Uh, I think this kind of goes hand in hand with the previous question. I think finding, finding people that are going to be as determined as you um, is really important. And I would say, um, at least right now, the whole industry is kind of shot because of the situation that we're all in. But um, in any normal circumstance, I would say the best thing that you could do is just travel and get your name out there and try and promote yourself as much as possible and do everything you can to get your name in front of people. And, um, I mean, whether you do that through, you know, physical flyers or try to get onto shows opening up for, for, um, bigger bands. I mean, the, the bottom line is just trying to get your name out there as much as possible, because the more people see your name, the more recognizable you will be to everyone. And, uh, and it doesn't help to try and become friends with people in the industry or um, in other bands as well. So, again, the internet is your friend. Just use it to your advantage. Funnest memories with each other. Um, I think my funnest memory is when... I can't remember what tour it was, but there was a tour where we were playing Halo non-stop and everybody was in the front lounge of the bus and we were all always playing halo it was always on and that's all we did we would wake up play halo go to vip go to sound check go to uh play the show go back to halo and that was just our life for the entire month of the tour and it was just cool to have everybody involved and and Everybody just had so much fun together, and I think that that's, that's one of my favorite memories. You've explored quite a few artistic fields. What's next on your radar? That is true. Um, there's nothing new on my radar as far as being artistic. I'm, I'm Like I said before, I'm going to just... I'm pulling back on everything and just trying to focus on film, and that's that. Um, I... I want to do music and I want to do film and I don't want to be distracted by anything else. I feel like at this point I know what I want and I'm going to just pursue that 
to the nth degree and try and see where that lands me. And, uh, and I guess that's my next artistic endeavor aside from music. Everyone gets bored in quarantine. Do you ever get so bored that you read fan fictions that people write about you and other band members? <laughs> I've never been that bored. Um, I actually have a funny story about this. So um, I I have, when I first heard about fan fictions, I didn't know what they were. And I read one and was like, well, I'm never going to do that again. And so this last tour, I was in Stick to Your Guns Green Room and Chris and George were both talking to me about our fan fictions. And I guess they had looked them up and they were like, you got to read these. You got to read some of them because they're just so they're just so creative and over the top. You just have to read some. So they pull one up, they start reading it and they're like, you have to read your lines. So they're reading the story and I'm reading, he's handing the phone to me and I'm reading the lines and I'm literally drenched in sweat because I'm so uncomfortable at what's happening. And, um, so thanks guys for that. That was great. Um, I really enjoyed that and I will never do that again. So, um, yeah. And I definitely won't get that bored during quarantine. So, um, you know, if that's, that's what you want to do, if you want to write a fan fiction, that's fine. I just won't read it. How old were you when you started writing? Gloom is awesome. Keep writing. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I was, uh, man, I don't know. I was, I started writing kind of dumb angsty poetry type, uh, poetry type stuff when I was in high school. And, uh, and that's kind of where it started was realizing that you could get emotion out and really tell a story with flowery language and, um, and kind of paint a picture in, you know, even just a sentence. And I think that is something that's super interesting to me. And I think that that's why I've always continued to go back to writing because you can tell a story in one sentence and that, and our, our entire lives are, are based around stories and, and I don't know, there's just something special about that to me. And, uh, yeah. So that's when I started writing when I was in high school. Sweet or unsweetened tea? All of Texas is watching. All of Texas? Are you sure all of Texas is watching? How many people are in Texas right now? I need to look this up. Texas population. Let's see. There's 29 million people in Texas. You're telling me that 29 million people are going to watch this. If that's the case, I will be the most popular person on the planet, I think. Um, so I don't believe you. And to answer your question, uh, neither. I don't really... Actually, that's not true. I drink hot tea. Um, but I don't drink cold tea. Um, sweet tea is cool sometimes. I just don't really... I'm kind of neutral about it. Hopefully t all of all of Texas doesn't hate me for saying that. Who are your inspirations in photography and filmmaking? This is a good question. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, photography wise, there's a guy that I really like named uh, Greg Crutzen, who does kind of, I think it's called tableau art or tableau photography. And it's just still life photography of people in certain situations and a lot of it is super dark and weird and um where everyone it's a family sitting at a, at a, a like a dining room table and i don't think there's anything weird happening but the way that it's lit and just how it looks is just super eerie and and unsettling and i really like that um so I would say him for photography and as far as filmmaking goes, um, for direction or I, sh I should say directing, um, uh, Jordan Peele, I think is incredible. Um, Ari Aster, his, his, uh, movies and all of his shorts are 
just insane. Just the way that he's able to make you feel so uncomfortable, you know, with just a scene or two. Um, uh, I mean, obviously Tim Burton, I would have to say. Um, and then as far as, I guess this could apply to photography as well, but, um, just framing and lighting, I would, I would say, um, a guy named Ben Cutchins who shot, uh, Ozark and Tim Ives who most recently did Stranger Things and Michael Slovis who has done uh, Breaking Bad among a million other things and I think him and Breaking Bad visually is really I was like blown away by just these vast landscapes and and just being able to tell a story in one one shot and I think all of, all of their work is really really special and um and I follow two of them on on uh, Instagram and they're really they have really cool uh photography stuff on their page so if anyone's interested um Ben Cutchins has one and Tim Ives has one and both of them uh post really cool stuff. What is your thought about fans getting tattoos of the bands or the band signatures? I think it's great. I think that it's really cool to be able to feel like we're a band that has impacted somebody so much that they want to, you know, put that on their skin forever. And I know that there were bands that I liked that much growing up. And I always thought I'm going to get this tattooed and this tattooed and this tattooed for this band and this band. And, and a lot of it was lyrics and thank God I didn't, didn't do that because, um, I can't imagine having, something like that on me now. Um, not that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's not my preference. So I'm glad that I didn't go that route, but um, I know that a lot of people do enjoy that and that's fine. Uh, but it's it's just cool to see and it's cool to, to know that people care that much. So thank you for doing that. What will you do if live music isn't back until next fall of 2021, like they're saying might happen? I don't know. Uh, I have thought about this and it's really scary to think about because <clears throat> there's a lot of, a lot of uh, jobs in the artistic field like ours that are kind of just going to go away for X amount of time. And for people like us that have been doing this, for years and years and years and don't know anything other than that it's kind of like what the hell am i going to do now like what where do i go from here what am i supposed to be doing now like what all i know is touring and traveling and and playing shows what am i supposed to do now that i don't have that um and that's a good question i don't know and i don't have an answer uh, i guess i'm just going to hope that that doesn't happen and that we can get back out there a lot sooner than that but um but yeah i i have no idea i i don't know what are you guys gonna do if that doesn't happen i mean what what are you guys gonna do if you can't go to shows for two years i think that's gonna be the real i think the fans are gonna freak the fuck out and uh and rightly so so we'll see hopefully that doesn't happen who are your favorite tattoo artists uh, well, this one's easy. Uh, I don't really follow much, much of the tattoo world, but the two artists that I go to are Angelo Parenti. Some of you may know him as being one, one of our old drummers. Uh, he and a guy named Tyler Powelzik own a tattoo shop called Black Casket up in Dixon City, Pennsylvania, and I get tattooed by both of them up there. And so I would only be comfortable recommending them. What happened to Ricky Horror? What happened to him? Well, I guess he just kind of went off the deep end and and nobody's heard from him since. I don't I don't know. That's a stupid joke. Uh I stopped using that because I just felt like um, 
I don't know. It just felt cringy to me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm almost 32 and I just feel like I don't need, I don't need a stage name. You know, I don't, I just don't need that anymore. And not that I ever did, but I feel like it works better when you're 20. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm wrong. I just personally am happy to go by my normal name. So, um, hopefully that doesn't, that doesn't ruin any of your guys's interest in the band or, or me because I'm choosing to go by my real name. How could you? How could you go by your real name? What an asshole. What's something that helped you stay positive? I think, uh, I think right now more than ever is important to stay positive. Everybody is having a tough time and, and the world kind of fucked right now. Something that keeps me positive is just knowing that tomorrow is going to exist and that I will still continue to get to do what I'm doing and pursue what I'm pursuing. And I'm starting to realize the theme here that if I, if, if I'm not able to create or, or be productive, then I'm going to freak out. And, uh, so I'm just glad that I'm able to do that. <laughs> is everyone in the band and crew doing okay? I think so. Uh, Ryan called me a few weeks ago to tell me that he was going to the desert in uh, in Nevada and that if he disappeared, that I was going to be the last person to know. And I haven't heard from him since. I know I, I've seen him post online, but how do we really know that that's Ryan, you know? Maybe it's something else. But yes, everybody in the crew, as far as I know, is doing fine. Shane FaceTimed me at 9 a.m. this morning when I was still in bed. So I still keep in touch with everybody. Not that Shane is in our crew anymore, but you know, uh, I still keep in touch with everybody and everybody's fine. Everybody's just living. What do you do in your free time on tour? Uh, bother everyone. Will there be a commentary for disguise? Yes, there will be. So relax. Uh, I think we're planning on doing it uh, about the one year anniversary of the release, kind of like we did with Graveyard Shift. So be on the lookout for that. Do you remember your dreams? Sometimes. <laughs> What is the one song you would play for the rest of your career for every show on every tour? I would have to say uh, Catharsis. What type of music do you normally listen to? I normally listen to whatever I'm in the mood for. Uh, I listen to kind of a wide range of stuff. There was a time where I was listening to... A lot of folky acoustic stuff. There was, uh, there was a time where I was listening to a lot of like top forties pop. There was a time where I was listening to a lot of uh, Black Bear and Post Malone type stuff. So I listen to a little bit of everything. The one genre that I don't listen to at all is country. I just, I just can't do it, or I haven't been able to. First band I ever listened to. I don't know. My dad had a huge collection of CDs when I was a kid, so... I don't know. Maybe Elvis or... Um, I don't know. Favorite alcoholic drink. I've recently acquired a taste for some nice Cabernet. So... That or a whiskey sour. Those are my two drinks of choice. What are some things you would tell a beginner to get for filmmaking? I would tell you to use your iPhone. I think everybody gets caught up in this, this uh, thing where they feel like they need to have the best camera and the best lens and the best this and the best that. And that's just not true at all. If you have an iPhone that shoots video, or any, I shouldn't say an iPhone. If you have any phone that shoots video, learn your framing, learn composition, learn how to 
uh, light things properly, learn exposure. No, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on, I have to show the world you because people are asking. No, you can't leave. Well, people wanted to see the dog and he came in and left, so I'm sorry. Will you sing more on future albums? I hope so. Uh, I was just talking to Chris recently and we're doing an alternate version of a song that uh, I'm gonna be singing on so that we can at least get some sort of content to you guys. So be also on the lookout for that at some point in the future. Some up and coming bands that you recommend checking out. Here's the thing, I'm really bad at listening to music in general, and I'm really, really bad at listening to new bands. And I don't even know how to find new bands anymore. So the only way that I ever hear new music is through Ryan if he's listening to something new, or through Vin if he's listening to, to something new. And that's it. I don't know anybody who's in like the up and coming metalcore scene. Um, I, I don't know. I, your guess is as good as mine. Go on, go on Pandora and shuffle some songs and maybe you'll find something you like. If you could go back in time and do things differently, would you? No. Well, it depends on if it's going to change my current circumstances. If it's going to change anything in my current life right now, then no. If that is not relevant and I can go back and change things anyway, then sure, there might be a couple things I'd change along the way, but um, for the most part, I, I like where I'm at and I like how things have evolved over the years. So uh, no, I wouldn't. I don't think I would change too much. When it comes to photography, what would you say is the best lens? So this question goes back to what I was saying previously in that there's not a best lens, I don't think. I mean, obviously, you're gonna have better quality lenses at higher price points, but I don't think there's any one lens that is the holy grail of lenses. I mean, every every uh, focal length has its purpose, and I don't think that anyone should look at it as what's the best. It's really what's the best for you and what you're trying to shoot. I personally always use wider lenses because I just like the look of that. And I, yeah, there's no right or wrong. It's just personal preference. Do you guys still hang out with Angelo? Uh, as I mentioned before, I have gotten tattooed by Angelo in the past and um, he's always super busy and we don't really get a chance to hang out too much outside of just when I'm at their shop. But, um, but I always hang out with him when I'm there and that's great. I love seeing him. In your opinion, when writing a gruesome scene, are you more intrigued as a reader to see it be told from the killer, the victim, or a witness's perspective? I am more intrigued to be told a gruesome scene when I'm the victim because I think put, being put in the place of somebody that's helpless and defenseless is way more terrifying than seeing it from a third party or seeing, seeing it from the killer where you have all the power. If you're in a situation where you cannot where you can't do anything and you don't have a choice, uh, that is, I think, the most terrifying thing. So <laughs> I would say that. Do your neighbors complain when you play guitar? No, they don't. They don't complain because I don't, I don't have a huge amp. I usually just play through my little desk monitors and through my computer. So it doesn't really ha have to be loud at all. Plans on playing Ireland next, next year. Um, I have no idea. I would like to play Ireland at some point, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The whole, the whole uh, 
theme of this episode is I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what's happening in the world. I don't know what I like. I don't know who I am. I don't know anything. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> favorite guitar. My favorite guitar is probably my custom that is, isn't even here. It's at our, uh, it's at our warehouse and yeah, <laughs> I don't have it here. So for people that don't know and have been asking, the guitar that I play, the custom that I have is a, an RG IB6 and I don't know why I don't have a signature with Ibanez. I really don't. What direction would you like to take your film skills? The goal that everybody has when they when they start pursuing that is is either feature film or um, episodic television, and I would love to see it go that route. But I don't know. I'm just trying to do what I'm doing and uh, seeing if it if it uh, manifests. We'll see. What has been your favorite part of rediscovering your love for film? My favorite part has been just having that new creative spark where everything feels new and fresh and exciting and fun and um and and i learn things every day i i really do like i said at the beginning of this that i've been watching master classes and um there's one that i started watching about lighting and it's just exciting you know it's it's exciting to take an interest and just consume it until you're absolutely sick of it. And I'm not sick of it yet. So that's how I know that I'm doing something right. And um, yeah, my favorite music video the band has is probably, probably another life because Max Moore is the man. You're my favorite guitarist and a big inspiration on why I decided to learn how to play guitar. Well, thanks. That's very nice. Who or what inspired you? What is your approach to creating riffs? Who inspired me? All the bands that I used to listen to back in the day all inspired me. Um, I think the other thing is just finding inspiration in everything. Like I, I find inspiration in film scores. I find inspiration in other genres of music so it's really it's really good to not be boxed in to one specific thing because there's so many different elements from all these different types of music that you can kind of pull in and and um and just use to your advantage in a way that people haven't necessarily heard before and i think that that is what continues to inspire me is finding continuing to find the things that is like, whoa, this is kind of interesting. And I haven't really heard this done in this way. Uh, let's run with it and see where it goes. Right, my approach to writing riffs or creating riffs is really just sitting and hammering it out. There's not really any, any other way to do it than that. What's the best advice for those looking to get into music as a full-time career? How would you go about it? I would go about it the exact same way that I did, just trying to find like-minded people and continuously put it out there. Um, I've always been a, a big, a big uh, advocate of what you put out comes back to you. And I think that if you believe in it enough that it will somehow work its way into your life. So. Do the best that you can and put it out there and try and meet people and network and um, it, it, you'll figure it out. What is your writing process? See, this is the predicament I put myself in when I, when I actually write and when I write. So I'm not sure which of those you mean, but uh, you're going to have to just elaborate and I'll just respond in comments, I guess. Where do you see the band going in five years? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure 
that I ever really anticipated us being together for as long as we have been. So I'm not really sure what to expect. I know that there was there was a funny comment that I saw that said um, something like, please don't become, don't pull a bring me the horizon. And I thought that was so fucking funny. I really like Bring Me the Horizon's new stuff. Uh, I thought, I thought Mother Tongue, off of Ammo, was one of the catchiest songs that I've heard in a while. So, um, <clears throat> say what you will about them. I think their music's great, and I think that the path that they followed is amazing. Um, and and the fact that they've been able to sustain a career, changing all of all through the different types of genres that they've played with has just been insane to see. So um, anyway, my point was not to say that that's where we're going. My point was to say that we like to experiment and I don't think that we're ever going to stop experimenting. And this industry is so unpredictable that it's hard to say where we might be in five years. I mean, we might not be anywhere next year after this, <laughs> after this pandemic. So who knows? Will you be making any films for wider audiences? Uh, that makes it sound like I've created films for very small audiences, and I haven't really. So, um, But yes, to answer your question, yes, I would love to. I'm trying to, and uh, we'll, see. we'll see what happens. What was your dream job when you were a kid? When I was a kid... When I was probably five, maybe five or six, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted, I was obsessed with space and I wanted to be an astronaut so bad. And then shortly after that, I lost all interest. So very short lived, but that's what I wanted when I was, uh, when I was like five. What are the specs on your current custom Ibanez? My custom Ibanez is actually the exact same as the stock RGIB6. The only difference is I had them put in some custom glow in the dark inlays and you know obviously the the uh the fret inlays at the top of the neck is custom and just changed the pickup out with uh Mick Thompson blackouts. That's it. Favorite book of all time. Man, this is another one of those favorites. Um, <clears throat> I can't really say a favorite book of all time. My favorite book that I've read in a while is a book called Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. And it's kind of like a sci-fi... <sighs> I don't know. It's I can't really explain it. You have to just go read it. It's great. If you like any type of sci-fi love story... Um, multiple like parallel worlds type stuff you'll dig it what's your favorite video game favorite video game of all time um i'm not a huge video game guy but uh the nintendo 64 ocarina of time is the best game if you have a pet please share i don't have any questions but please talk about your dog <laughs> I tried to get him to come in here earlier and he wouldn't. Um, maybe I should just go get him. He's being stubborn. So this is my dog, uh, Fester. He's a miniature pincher. People requested that I that I uh, show him. So here he is. Um, he's getting a little, a little antsy. <laughs> That's it. That's all, dude. They just wanted to say hi. If you had to be a woman for a day, what would be the first thing you'd do? Um, I'd dress up in really revealing clothing and go out and see what it feels like to be catcalled and uh, experience that because I feel like I would get a better appreciation for what women have to deal with on a daily basis. What was my first guitar? My first guitar was a knockoff... Fender Squire, a sunburst one, and uh, and yeah, I played that for a long time, and then I got a an Ibanez seven string for some reason, 
So I jumped from not knowing how to play guitar to knowing how to kind of play and then getting a seven string just because uh, Korn had seven strings. So that was my, that was my uh, guitar evolution there. Any recent books you recommend? Uh, I've been really bad with books lately and I haven't really read much. Uh, but I read a book at the beginning of the year called Recursion by Blake Crouch. Um, and it's really great. And uh, I can't even explain the plot to you because it's fucking weird. But it's awesome. I read the whole thing in one day. So um, I can't recommend that dude's writing enough. I, I have been hooked on his stuff ever since I read uh, his Pines trilogy. And... Uh, yeah, so check out his stuff. What are the songs that didn't make the Disguise album? Well, oh, where are the songs that didn't make the Disguise album? Well, they're they're just in a computer. They're sitting there just waiting to be used. So that's, that's where they're going to stay until we're ready to show them to the world. What are you most looking forward to doing once the regulations get lifted? Uh, God... You have no idea how bad I want to go to Target and just kind of walk around. Whatever happened to Gift of Prophecy? How many shows did you play with the band? Did you leave for MIW or did the band break up before you offered the position in, in Motionless? Okay, so <clears throat> my first like real serious band was called Gift of Prophecy. And we started out as kind of like a thrashy, a thrashy metal band. Um... And I was the front man, and I screamed really awful. And uh, to answer your question, the band, I got kicked out of the band because they thought that I was trying to be, um, I was trying to be John Pettibone from Himza. And so they kicked me out, and they continued on for another year or so. And then I ended up getting this this uh, opportunity so things worked out in that regard but uh it's actually funny because the drummer from that band ended up leaving and playing for a band called i declare war and then the one guitar player greg left that band and went on to go play for as blood runs black so it's interesting that three of us from that band ended on ended up going on to other bands that toured and um continued to write music for a while so interesting what is your dream cast in a movie directed by you i'm gonna need to think about this one because i'm gonna need to figure out the 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 genre and uh just figure out all the all the nitty-gritty details before i can give a good answer for that so you're gonna have to come back and ask this in the comments and i will respond to them Tips for someone learning guitar. Take it easy. Don't don't uh, beat yourself up. It's hard. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to stumble. Build your calluses and uh, just just try and try and play as much as you can. Oh, and another thing, play with a metronome sometimes because I had a friend growing up that never played along to songs or played to a metronome ever and when he would write music he would write them in the weirdest time measurements because he would play a riff without any sort of internal idea of how long that riff was supposed to last and it drove me fucking crazy so learn how to learn uh i guess just play along with other songs and you'll just innately pick up um timing so that's very important my favorite part of my job is not having a normal job. <laughs> I love being able to kind of be my own boss per se. And I mean, not that I'm, it's really, you know, five of us that are our own bosses together. But um, I think just being able to to be creative and and make a living kind of living an abnormal lifestyle where you can kind of make your own rules and and do whatever you want to an extent is is almost like that weird pirate's life and i think that that's that's really cool 
am I happy with my life right now? I am happy with my life. Um, there are a lot of things that I've been thinking about more as I've gotten older. And if I think about it too much, I, I get kind of weirded out because I start thinking about other things and I don't, I start thinking about how much time I have left to accomplish things that I want to do still. And, um, and so I think that kind of weighs on me because I feel like how much time do I have left? I don't know. I need to get everything done that I want to get done while I'm here. And, uh, and I think as I get older that, that, uh, puts strain on myself, but I think aside from that, that's very, uh, they're very much an existential problem. Um, but I am very happy with my life right now. Thank you for asking. What are your thoughts when it comes to the paranormal? My thoughts are that that shit's fucked up and anybody that touches a Ouija board is fucked. Um, I don't play with that stuff anymore. I have had a lot of weird things happen and I just don't like bad energy. I don't like any of that stuff. I don't want anything following me around. I don't like it. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with if someone's house is haunted and it's a cool ghost and it just kind of hangs out, then that's fine. But um, I don't want no spooky shit part about being in motionless. My favorite part about being in motionless is feeling like we're putting together a group or a place where people that feel like they have nowhere else to belong can go. And that's something that I didn't have when I was growing up. And so to be able to give that back to people that that don't have that now is really, really cool to me. Um, so I think that's probably my favorite thing about being in the band. Since you're making short films lately, what are some movies, artists, or people that have inspired you? Okay. So this is kind of goes back to the previous question about, uh, photography and film influence. Um, I'm going to say that movie wise, I think the most recent one that really blew me away was the Joker movie. I thought that visually it was insane. We went in there, watched it in the theater, came out, and I was like, should we just go back in and watch it again? Because I was fucking insane. Uh, so that movie, really, I was like, how did they do... How did they shoot a lot of this? How did they light a lot of this? How does this just look so good? As far as TV shows, I would say... Um, this, there's a show on Netflix called Dark that I think looks incredible. And uh, this, it doesn't help that the story in the show is fucking incredible as well. But visually, is absolutely stunning. It's one of the most gorgeous shows I've ever seen, in my opinion. And, uh, and I aspire to create something that looks visually that that amazing if you had to take only one other band member with you to a deserted island who would it be and why that is an easy one i would take ryan because he would love to sit on the beach and drink coconuts and surf and build fires and all that and um he's probably the only one that wouldn't complain so i would bring ryan would i ever post a makeup tutorial i am not by any means the makeup guy. The makeup that I do takes me 10 minutes to do. I rush it on and I take it off as soon as we're done playing. Justin is the makeup guy. If you wanna see him do a tutorial, go bother him and I'm sure he'll do one. Would you ever upload covers on your YouTube channel? Yeah, I would. Um, I just haven't found a song that I want to cover bad enough to do it. When packing for a tour, what are the essentials you must have? my laptop and a camera at this point. Um, actually, I need a toothbrush too. Uh, everything else, I'm fine. Maybe, maybe deodorant because I don't want to smell. And maybe cologne because I don't want to smell. <laughs>
What is one of your biggest pet peeves when touring? My biggest pet peeve when touring is uh, when people leave their shit around on the bus and nobody can put shit away. I like when people have their stuff, they keep it in their space, and they don't make the bus a mess. Uh, <laughs> that's my biggest pet peeve. Do you intend to keep making these short movies? <laughs> I love the way that's written because it almost it almost comes across like, do you intend to keep making these short movies? And to answer your question whether you meant it that way or not is yes, I do. <laughs> so sorry. How does it feel not being able to talk to or reach out to every single fan asking for advice or wanting to share something with their favorite band? Uh, it's hard and it's also not hard. Um, it's hard because I feel like with social media, everyone expects a response and it's just not possible. If, if I responded that literally every person that sent me anything ever, I wouldn't be able to leave my house. So, um, it sucks in that regard because I don't want anyone to feel like I'm avoiding them or intentionally not responding or, um, or like they're not worth my time or something like that because that's not true at all. It's just, there's such a volume of people that I just, it's just not possible. So I think when I, it, it, makes it more special for when I do get to connect with somebody because I don't always. And I think in that regard, it's really special. But uh, like I said, on the other hand, it's kind of shitty because I don't want anyone to misconstrue my stance on it. Um, you guys are all important and I wish that I could respond to everybody, but I can't. It's just not possible. I'm sorry. Have you were the band ever snuck or hidden anything into any of the songs that you're waiting for us, the audience, to find? That is a good question. And the answer to that is yes. I guess we're not waiting per se for you to find it, but um, there's a couple things that I think are kind of hidden that if you guys found would be funny. Um, one of our songs is, <sighs> one of the riffs in one of our songs is inspired by um what's that video called what's the dubstep the dubstep the most insane dubstep guy that does that video okay well one of our songs a riff is inspired by his dubstep so if you can figure that out let me know <laughs> do you or any of the guys remember certain fans when you go to specific cities yes of course um, at this point we've been, we've been going to almost every major city in the U S for the last 10 years. So, um, people that come to every show are of course, way more recognizable. And, um, and I think that for the most part, we, or you guys know that and, um, and we reach out and say as much. So, um, yeah, we, we love when fans continue to come back and, and it's cool. It feels less like, like you're a stranger and more like you're a friend coming to hang out for this one time event that's happening. And, uh, and I think that's cool. All right. So I just recorded the last, I don't know, 40 minutes of this and, uh, and my memory card filled up and I didn't realize it. So, um, I'm going to try and blast through these last few again and uh, get these out. So the last thing I left off on was, would you ever play your acoustic version of Eternally Yours live? No, I don't think so. Chris asked me to a while back and I say no because the way that I wrote it, I never anticipated playing it live. And there are parts that I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to play and sing at the same time. So for that reason, unless somebody else was playing the guitar and I was singing, I don't think I'd be able to play that song live, unfortunately. Favorite conspiracy theory. I'm going to say, I'm going to tilt your question and say the most annoying conspiracy theory that I've seen lately is people 
destroying 5G cell towers because they think that that's causing coronavirus. And I, I don't even know what to say. Just stop. Just quit. Because that's the most idiotic thing. What album do you always go back to? The Cade of Choir by It Dies Today. Is it true that you're naturally blonde? Can you tell? It's been a been a rough couple months. <laughs> Is Vinny single? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. He hasn't really talked to me about his love life. What have the past few weeks taught you? The past few weeks... Uh, here's the thing. I thought that I knew what ignorance and stupidity looked like. And the last few weeks taught me that that ignorance and stupidity is a literal bottom bottomless well in the country. It just doesn't end. And I was pretty floored by that. I don't know why, but um, it caught me off guard. So I like to try and think the best of people. And with this whole pandemic thing, I've really just been like, wow, you guys are idiots. Are you doing anything special for the 10 year anniversary of Creatures? Yes, uh, we, as far as I know, we're doing a merch line of kind of throwback creatures stuff for that occasion. Uh, I don't really know anything else at the moment. Yo, my name's Austin. My question is, what do you use for your software editing for your videos? Yo, Austin, I use uh, DaVinci Resolve. I used to use Premiere and I was tired of it crashing all the time. And so now I use Resolve and it works great. It's free and uh, it's better than anything you could need for free. What does being in the music industry look like right now with the pandemic? It looks like a shit show. It looks like a shit show. Um, <clears throat> man, I don't know what to really say other than that. It's chaos. It's all these tours getting canceled. Everybody scrambling to find tentative dates for the next time they can go out and then when those those aren't possible they scramble to find more and it's just been an been absolute madness i can't even imagine what it must be like right now to be a booking agent so uh first song you ever played on guitar whatever green day song this is Is tracking guitars as stressful for you as it is for me? It makes me tear my hair out. Tracking guitars is only stressful for me when Chris is standing right here or right here. He's very much a perfectionist, so I feel a lot of pressure to play everything perfectly when he's when he's around watching. So uh, I would say in that regard, I feel stress, but uh, other than that, no, I don't. I don't stress out. I just. It is what it is. How do you deal with writer's or artist block? The best way for me to deal with that is to just step away from it, even for five minutes, and just try and do something else or try and kind of occupy yourself with something else to get away from it and come back with a new perspective. That's about the only way I can think of to deal with it. Over the years of being in a band, how did you guys stay humble and grounded through your, throughout your growth? You are all so sweet and caring. Well, thank you. Um, I try to be sweet and caring. Uh, let's see. I think being grounded, you just have to understand. You just have to know that you're not better than anyone else. And I think that's how people don't stay grounded is because they think for some reason they're on some sort of pedestal and I know for a fact that I am not better than anybody else and I know that I wouldn't be here without all of you guys so I think it, it's a little idiotic to, to for someone to have that kind of attitude but um I I don't know I just I try and treat everyone as equals and that's about as as good as I, I can be. Uh, the other thing I think is is it's nice to have friends that will call you on your bullshit. So in our friend group at least, it's we all if somebody starts starts getting a little bit diva-ish, 
everyone will talk shit to that person for a week about it until they come back down to earth. And I think it's really helpful to have friends like that to be able to keep you level headed and, um, and, uh, keep you, keep you down to earth. Will you be touring with Beartooth again in the future? I sure goddamn hope so. What is the creative process like for your, for you to create your short films and what is the most challenging and rewarding aspect of finishing a short film? <sighs> okay, so from everything I've read and understood, the hardest part of doing anything film related is just getting out there and doing it because from what I understand, so many people talk about doing it and just never do it and continue to talk about it and continue to talk about it. So I think the biggest first hurdle for people is to just do it and finishing the first one that I just did was super emotional for me. And, um, even for Bryce who was here and worked on it with me, him and my buddy, Jimmy, who was here from, uh, from, from Washington state, all, all of us were super emotional because we were all part of this thing that was just, we learned so much and, and, uh, created, something that we thought was so special and to be able to experience that with other people was, was just unreal. So, um, I, I guess that in itself is the most rewarding part of finishing. Um, as far as the creative process goes, as far as this last one, there's a lot that went into it. I was acting as uh, director, uh, casting director, uh, wardrobe, location scout, producer, and now I'm editing and coloring and sound designing and everything. So it's just crazy to spend. I, I started working on it in November and didn't stop working on it until we started shooting in February. So for about, what is that, four months? four months I worked on it and it still didn't feel like it was fully fleshed out until, until, uh, we started shooting. And even then it was figuring out stuff on the fly and, and really trying to figure out the best, the best lighting and camera placement for the space that we had. Cause a lot of the spaces were really, really small and tight. And, uh, so we made do with what we could and I'm really proud of, of what we were able to come up with. And uh, I stand by the fact that I think it was the most creatively fulfilling thing that I've done probably my whole life, just to have that much in of myself in something. So that, that again, that in itself is just so rewarding. Do you still live in Pennsylvania? If so, it makes you stay there versus living somewhere more glamorous like LA or Nashville. Yes, I still live in Pennsylvania. I stay here because everything is here. The band is based from here. My girlfriend lives here. We rent a house from here and everything is just here. It's easy and it's also affordable. It's way cheaper to live here than it is to live anywhere else. At least when you're talking about uh, LA or Nashville and I've actually been thinking about that a lot recently because with trying to get into the film world more, I keep thinking, am I going to have to move to New York or LA or somewhere where it's more prominent, but I'm hoping that I can stay where I'm at and just fly to places. Cause I don't know if I want to move. How do you think the industry may change if at all in a post COVID world when it comes to concerts, touring, recording, and meet and greets, stay safe. Thank you. You stay safe too. I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how or what is going to happen, really. It's been such a clusterfuck that I really don't know. It, it makes me wonder if maybe there's going to be some sort of crazy shift that happens where bands don't tour as often, but do something else instead because nobody knows how long this is going to go on for and someone's going to eventually come up with a way for us to make things work between the relationship between us and you guys. So 
I'm interested to see what that's going to look like. I had no idea you wrote books. I had just checked it out on Amazon and found out it's horror. It's pretty much impossible to find one scary enough as far as I'm concerned. What's the creepiest book you've ever read? I didn't know that it, my book was uh, classified as horror on Amazon, and it is not. So please don't re go into it thinking that it is going to be, because you're going to be very disappointed if that's the case. Uh, as far as your question goes, the creepiest book I've ever read... I haven't finished it yet, but is House of Leaves. It's the only book that I've ever read or started to read that gave me nightmares. So I want to read it maybe during this quarantine time. I will. Creepiest thing that's ever been thrown at you on stage. I don't know about creepy. We've had all sorts of shit thrown on stage. Most of the time it's just bras, I think. Do you have any ambitions to work on a budgeted short film? Yes, please, someone give me money to make a short film. I will make it good, I promise. Who wrote the main riff to reincarnate? Chris did. Tell Bonnie to cut his hair. I don't know who Bonnie is. I'm assuming you're, you're, mean, you're saying Vinny. I, I like Vinny's hair. What happened to the masks you guys were selling? Okay, it was my fault that the masks got taken down. I had an issue with them. To me personally, I feel like the people that need the masks the most are the people on the front lines, the medical workers that don't have literally anything to wear. And it feels wrong for us to sell masks when, to me, those masks that could be made should be donated to the people that ap actually need them. And I know people are saying, well, I need masks too, and really you should just be staying home if you can. Um, Masks should not be your number one concern. And the nice thing is that everybody can make a mask. Um, but yeah, I just felt, I don't know, it just felt weird to me. It felt like we were trying, felt like it was coming across as though we were trying to capitalize on on a global health crisis. And I didn't like the feeling of that at all. So I wanted to pull them and make sure that you know, we weren't contributing to something that felt scummy like that. So I hope you guys understand and hopefully no one's mad at me for it, <laughs> but uh, I will take the blame if anybody wants to, wants to uh, be upset. Would you be interested in starting a record label? No, that is way too much work and way too much stress. I don't want to deal with that. When are you going back to Creature Style? Not a fan of the last two albums at all. Uh, thanks for your honesty. We are not going back to creature style. That would be a huge back, backward step in our evolution. And uh, I'm sorry you don't like any of the new stuff. But I'm sure that there's a hundred other bands out there that are making music that's similar to creatures that you can enjoy. And uh, hopefully you'll still stick around for the couple songs that we put out that that do kind of throwback to those early days are we ever going to get another cops episode seeing as though the two originators of the cops episode tj and balls are not in the band uh no how did you learn to scream when you were younger i didn't and i can't <laughs> so don't ask me i have no idea would you ever be a guest on our campus radio show sure I don't know what radio show it is, but yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm a metal lover and a guitarist, but I feel like all my stuff is starting to sound the same. How do you make sure that doesn't happen? I think the best way to make sure you don't get boxed in is to listen to a variety of things. I think the more different genres of music you listen to, the more, the more you can kind of pull from all those different influences to make your songs different and make sure everything sounds a little bit different here and there so you're not just playing the same metal song over and over and over. Do you have a dream of fronting your own band or are you happy with your position in MIW? I am more than happy with my position right now. What's your opinion on using Kemper or Axe Effects Live? We use Kemper, so I am pro Kemper. Is the character in the disguise video a guy or CGI effects? The character in the disguise music video is actually a girl and it is practical effects. 
all uh, prosthetics and makeup, no CGI. Have you ever planned to make a music video for MIW by yourself? I would love to. I haven't planned on it because I don't have that authority to just say, I'm making a goddamn music video, but I would love to. We've talked about it a little bit here and there, but nothing solid yet. But eventually I'm hoping. What is your relationship with Tim Skold? I love that question because it assumes that Tim and I are up to nefarious things. And, uh, <laughs> and we may or may not be. Hmm. What DAW do you use? I use Cubase to record all of my demos and stuff for the band. Are you concerned about touring when the lockdown lifts? I think that's a big concern with everybody involved in the industry is how are we going to protect not only the artists but the fans as well? Because, I mean, these are a lot of times real small rooms with a shit ton of people packed into them. How do we keep everybody safe? And I think that's why everything is so unknown right now is because we don't know how long it could last. And we're really the biggest risk factor is public spaces and gatherings. So I think, unfortunately, we're probably going to be the last things that come back. And I don't know when or how that's going to happen, but... We're all trying to stay positive and take it day by day. And I guess that's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And uh, as you can see, it's dark outside now and my voice is raspy and I can't talk anymore. So if there's anything I missed or anything that you guys want answered, comment them below and uh, I will try to get back to you within a couple days or a week or so. And uh, just to keep this rolling because nobody has anything to do and might as well try and try and connect while we're while we're all stuck doing the same thing. So for now, stay safe, stay inside, uh, love your pets and uh, and have a good day or night or morning or whatever it is where you are when you're watching this. So take care, everyone. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.